Hi, I'm Martin Taylor and welcome to this video which is uh, dedicated to compositions written by the great Duke Ellington. Um, I'm going to play performance versions of uh, each tune, uh, then I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, how I came about the, the arrangement and some of the techniques and ideas that I use, and then we're going to split the screen and I'm going to play uh, a shorter version of my performance version. So, um, first of all, let's uh, start by getting in tune. The first tune I'm going to play is called Just Squeeze Me.
That's a tune I've been playing for quite a long time, and uh, over the years I've developed uh, an arrangement uh, of it. And uh, what I like to do with all the tunes I play is to have some kind of uh, an arrangement that I can use as a, a framework and even a kind of a, a safety net uh, when I'm improvising. So depending on how I feel, um, uh, the percentage of the arrangement and the improvisation will change. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the, the basic uh, arrangement of this. And on this one, I've, um, the introduction I've, uh, I've come up with is very different from the tune. Normally, I'll play a, uh, an introduction that will have something to do with the tune to set it up. But in this case, I've used uh, an idea of playing something that is or more kind of classical, um, so that when I actually come in with a tune, it comes as a surprise. So I've come up with this kind of orchestral type of thing. Then getting into harmonics so that we get a harp-like quality to the, the uh, arrangement. then using as many harmonics as I can to, to get this phrase in. Some false harmonics. And then it sets me up for the tune then. So that's giving me the, we're getting into the feel of the tune now. Hopefully it gets people's feet tapping and so they know where I am. At this point I should probably warn you that I use upstrokes with my thumb as well. But here, I'm, to get that, that effect, I'm actually, I'm actually damping the strings here. We'll do some more of that later when I get play some other bass lines for you. Um, so I get into the tune, I play the tune, then um, I play some improvised uh, pieces, uh, and then I go into like a, a bass solo. And then what I did to, I'm playing this in D, but actually I want to end up in E because um, I want to get a nice <laughs> bass note there. So um, what, I'm do, what I start to do in the bass solo, I start going into 3-4 which kind of gives it another feel. And then I reharmonize the tune. I play the tune actually in the, the minor key rather than the major key, and I reharmonize it, and I move up in such a way that so I end up in the key of uh, the key of E. So after this This has given it another feel. So something's gonna happen. You get a feeling something's gonna happen. This is what's happening. Harmonize. I'm getting up here and I'm into E where I want to be. And then getting back down into D is, is very easy. Just go from the E minor seventh to A seventh and then we're back into again. I stay in E all the way, and then go into four again, and then keeps me in the key so that right at the very end I can then go into. That's a real jazz kind of lick.
So let's split the screen and I'll play a short version, a short arrangement for you. This next tune is called I'm Beginning to See the Light.
The introduction that I've given on that tune is really just there to, to set up the feel, to set up the time. So this thing, this, uh, this feeling here. So you, you got the, the, the feel of the whole thing. You can play that two ways. I play it this way. This is the fingering I use. Go to a bar here, but you can play it bar all the way down. I use a lot of the the fingering I do. Um, I keep a, uh, the first finger barred a lot of the time, and I play a lot of the lines with with these three fingers. So, um, and a lot of the time it's within four frets. Um, what I've done here is when I'm playing the melody. I'm really just thinking about the melody and the bass note, so I'm playing. And then filling in the middle. And when I'm improvising, uh, I think a lot of the time in tenths, this kind of thing. That's a good thing to really practice and get under your fingers and a lot of the, my improvisation is based around that. It's a bit like the left hand on a piano playing a... So when you, uh, when you actually come to improvise some things on there, bear that in mind. And uh, in the meantime, I'll play uh, uh, a shorter version, just the arrangement with, without the improvised uh, part in the middle. We'll split the screen and uh, you can play along to this. This next tune is a, a real favourite of mine that uh, I first heard a very good friend of mine, guitarist called Ike Isaacs, uh, playing this tune, and we used to play it together 
as a duo, so it has very uh, fond memories for me. Uh, it's called Drop Me Off at Harlem. <laughs> Probably a good time to uh, point out just a couple of things about my uh, style of playing um, uh, that would really uh, be of relevance to this tune. Because there's always so many things going on in my playing, there's chords, melody and bass line, um, it's very important that they don't kind of get too jumbled up. So you've, you've got to have a way of um, using dynamics within those, those three parts and bringing out whichever part you want to, uh, to be louder or, or uh, maybe you want the melody louder or sometimes you'll bring a, a bass uh, line in and you want that to go above everything else. So you have to develop this kind of internal uh, dynamics. But usually the, um, uh, when you're playing a tune, you really got to have that, that melody coming out on top so it really sings. You, got to have like a singing quality to it. So you can even start off just by practicing, practicing the, uh, the tune first. And then when you're playing it together with all the other parts, 
you've got to really let this sing out so that you can really hear it very clearly and things don't get too jumbled up. <laughs> Right, we're going to split the screen now and um, I'm going to play a, a shorter version of Drop Me Off at Harlem. Here's an arrangement of a tune that I first heard my friend uh, Ike Isaacs, who I mentioned earlier. I first heard him play this, so this is not um, purely my own uh, arrangement. I've taken a lot of things from Ike's arrangement on this. Um, don't get around much anymore. Thank you. 
In this arrangement, there's um, good examples of what I was talking about earlier about playing in, in tenths. And I've also uh, reharmonized or harmonized parts of the melody where there would actually have only been two chords. I've actually uh, reharmonized this. So, um, in fact, I should play it because it's a little bit of a, a tricky thing uh, to play. You may not get it straight away with uh, when you saw it before. But here. So that's um, that's kind of a, an old-fashioned way of playing, I guess. It would be people like Eddie Lang played this kind of chord melody. <laughs> Guitar players like Carl Cress, uh, of course George Van Epps, uh, real master of this style of uh, style of playing. So. Uh, if you can just remember those couple of things, and uh, I'm going to split the screen and play the short version for you. Now I'm going to play one of Duke Ellington's most famous tunes in a mellow tone. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I'm playing this tune, I'm thinking uh, like a big band, like a, an arranger would who's writing for a big band. There's, I'm playing lines and then there's uh, an answering. Um, <laughs> So that's like uh, the soloist. And that's like a, maybe the, the trombone section in the in the big band. When you're playing this, don't be afraid to to let the whole thing breathe and and have some space in there. Because that kind of adds to the whole feel of it, and um, because. I'm not really playing anything, I'm not playing time, there's no, there's no, there's nothing going on playing time. I've got to suggest the time, or, so uh, I can do that by the way I phrase it. Uh, feel the pulse there. So it's really to do with having that pulse going underneath all the time, but by phrasing it uh, in such a way. Sometimes there are even like ghost notes that I'll, that I'll play in, which you'll, I'm sure you'll, you'll pick up on. And uh, don't be afraid to, to leave some gaps in there. We'll split the screen and uh, I'll play this short version for you. <laughs> Well, we've come to the end of this video. I hope that it's been of uh, help to you, or you and you've enjoyed it. And don't forget that when you're practicing these, practice them slowly. You know, just, just kind of take your time with it and kind of um, get the feeling for, for each tune so that uh, pick the, and then kind of get up to the speed, get up to the right tempo. It doesn't have to be fast, but kind of get the right tempo so you make these things swing, because this is, this is real swing music. So. Um, Think of those things, take it, take it easy, take it slowly, and uh, enjoy them. Um, 
Uh, if I'm around your way playing, uh, please come along to see me. You can always find out where I'm playing uh, through my website, which is martintaylor.com. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with the blues. <laughs>